tonight joseph life journey amen god hid my future in my struggle in genesis we start at the 42nd chapter we're going to be reading verses 21 through 24 and then we're going to jump to amen genesis 45 you're going to y'all be able to read that in between thing that happened i'm going to talk about it but you can go and read it but tonight for our reading we're in genesis the 42nd chapter verses 21 through 24 Genesis 42, 21 through 24. 42, 21 through 24. Everybody there? Amen. 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 Genesis, that is the very first book in the Bible. Nowhere you can miss it if you go to the first book in the Bible. 21st verse says, And they said one to another, We are very guilty concerning our brother. And that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us, and we would not hear. Therefore is this distress come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child, and ye would not hear. Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. And they knew not that Joseph understood them, for he spake unto them by an interpreter. 
I won't read 24. And it said, and he turned himself about from them and wept and returned to them again and communed with them and took them from Simeon and bound him before their eyes. And bound him before their eyes. Now, in, in this reading on tonight, we find that uh, the brothers, the brothers were brought to guilt by what was happening to them. And they began to think that maybe what's happening to me is because we wronged our brother. It's one thing about people when they do you wrong. They may act like they forgot, but they didn't. Huh? You, you, you can do all kind of things to kind of forget that you've done wrong to somebody. And then when things negatively begin to happen and come your way, amen, then you begin to think. Someone said that in this, in this passage of scripture concerning Joseph, that Joseph is doing much like God said, if you will, do us. That, that God does not give us something right away. And that Joseph was trying to find out where the heart of his brothers were. So therefore, that's why he questioned them and said that you are spies. And that's why he did what he did and said, well, do you have a younger brother? And they said, they began to say, well, they began to testify. They said, well, it's, it was it was 12 of us and, uh, and, and one of us is not. And so they remember. All right. Amazing that they remember to even mention Joseph even though they didn't know they were talking to Joseph and how they began to say, well, one is not and that we have a younger brother and, that, and our dad is old and he's yet grieving about our, our brother that was lost. And uh, they began to think, wow, what did we do? Now, they knew that they had necessarily not killed Joseph, but they didn't know whether or not Joseph was yet alive. So therefore, they were concerned. Now, it began to show here that they were concerned about Joseph, but not concerned enough to find out if he was yet alive. So, in other words, they, they yet had some dislike about Joseph, and then Joseph yet wanted to really, uh, he was trying to figure out, are they really sad that they did this other thing? You know, sometimes people will do things and they'll try to find out how sorrowful you are if you did something to them and said, well, were you really sad about it? Did that really bother you? Or are you okay? So Joseph was trying to figure it out. And remember last week I told you that it's not our responsibility to try to bring someone else to repentance. You are not God. You are not Jesus. You didn't die for anybody. So it's not your responsibility to say, well, I want to bring you to repentance. I want to hear you say you sorry. And there are some of us, when folk come wrong with us, we want to hear them say, I want to hear it come out of your mouth. I want to hear you say you suffering. <laughs> How many of y'all like that? How many of y'all like that? Y'all can be honest about it. I want to know. You hurt me, and I want to hear you say it. That you're sorry. But do you not know that forgiveness is not big or based on whether or not somebody come back and tell you they're sorry for what they did to you? Do you not know somebody said, well, well, if they go to the grave, don't worry about them going to the grave. you going to the grave too. Hello, somebody. And, and if you're not careful, I could, if I offended a, 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 a sister Lavelle, and maybe I never went to her personally and told her I was sorry or asked her for, to forgive me for whatever wrong I did. But if I asked God and I meant it in my heart, then I've been forgiven for that sin. Watch this now. You got people walking around yet hating people, yet feeling guilty about folk because they said, well, they haven't come to me personally. And with your attitude, they don't need to come to you personally because all it's going to be is an argument. When the governor pardons a prisoner, y'all heard it, right? When the governor pardons a prisoner, watch this, in prison, guilty of the crime they committed, and the governor says, I want to pardon that particular criminal. That criminal doesn't have to tell the governor, I'm sorry, forgive me, I didn't mean it, I'm nothing. If the governor pardons him, then that means that he's pardoned. In other words, the governor say, I forgive you for the wrong you did, whether you ever meant it or said to me or not. Well, guess what? You don't have a right. To yet treat me like a, pr a criminal or a prisoner if I've been forgiven. Uh-oh. See, some of you all don't like the fact 
that when folks are forgiven, you think, well, they got off easy. But none of us in here are perfect. None of us are in here are perfect all the time. None of us in here do the right thing all the time. And if God is forgiven of us, of our sin, of our wrong, of our error, who are you to try to hold someone accountable and you not straight yourself? You crooked as two left shoes and you trying to make me right. So here in this lesson on tonight, Joseph was trying to come to an end with his brethren. And so they finally said it. And they said one to another, we are guilty concerning our brethren. They said we are guilty. Listen, y'all, let me tell y'all something. Guilt will eat you up like cancer. Guilt will eat you up like cancer. And not only that, unforgiveness will give you more medical problems than science help, than science help drugs for. Let me say it again. Unforgiveness will give you more medical problems than science have a cure for. And you know what? Do y'all not know there is not a cure for unforgiveness? But to forgive? There's not a cure for unforgiveness but to forgive. And I told y'all before, I'm not going to hell not forgiving y'all. I'm going to forgive y'all and let y'all go to hell. Matter of fact, y'all don't go to hell. I'm going to hell. Because I forgive. And listen, it takes God to be able to help you to forgive. This is what we're dealing with tonight. So can we come to some kind of idea that Joseph's brethren, maybe for the first time in their lives, were feeling like, maybe we need to forgive our brother. And forgive ourselves. Look at somebody said, can you forgive yourself? Joseph brethren was in a place, a position where it's like, wow, do, 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 do I forgive myself? Do, do I say I'm sorry? I, I know I'm guilty of the crime and I know everything has happened to me. That's why, listen, your blessing can be a blessing to someone else and your curse can be a curse to somebody else. That's why when Jonah got on the boat with his disobedient self, was causing harm to everybody else, and he was the one that was disobedient. Right. I'm gonna tell y'all what, it's a bad thing to be around a disobedient person. In case y'all didn't know it, y'all best friend, y'all family member, y'all blood thicker than water. I don't count the blood thicker than water. If a person is disobedient, you should not definitely make that person your friend. That should not be the person you hang out with if they are a disobedient person. Because guess what? Something is about to come their way that's going to be negative. And if you are a part of it, guess what? Negativity come your way. Hello, y'all. When a crime is committed and you with the person that's committed a crime, the police doesn't say, well, I didn't see you committed, but you was hanging with them. You can let go. No, they put both of y'all in jail. Now, the, the question they ask, Sister Dean, is, did you know that so-and-so was going to steal? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, you might have must have got you something, picked up you something, too, because you're going to jail. Right. Huh? I don't want to get to stealing. You was my ace boom coon. You get locked up for being my ace boom coon. And some of y'all say, I don't care what it is. I go down with my friend. I don't leave my friend for nothing. I'm leaving you. You're going to jail by yourself. And if I have to tell the police, you the one stolen. I'll tell them. <laughs> Somebody said, you a telltale. I show sure him. Especially when it comes to going to jail. I don't love you that much. I'm sorry that I do not love you that much. And I'm not going to jail for you. Uh, let, 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 me, let me say something. These, these gang members and these criminals and these folks that's in the crime syndicate and do all this stuff and, and, and tell me I'm going to jail for my homie. I ain't going to jail for my homie. You go to jail, your family ain't take care of as much as they talk about their family and we bloods and we this and we that. They don't take care of your family. They don't even take care of you. And most of the guys when they go to jail don't even get no visitors. 
But you went to jail. I'm going to jail for Jackson. And Jackson don't never call, don't never write. And matter of fact, Jackson don't even feel bad enough to tell the police, you know what? I got to let my buddy out of jail or put me in jail with my buddy. Why? I committed the crime. He took the fall for me. Jackson ain't finna come and tell the police that and spend no time in jail with me. He gonna let me ride in there if I have to. And then you get right back out. I'm talking tonight. I don't kill this here. I'm talking tonight. You get right back out of jail from serving a crime for your H. Boom Coon and for your buddy and go back to the same hood and talk about they your friend. Right. Yeah. They your family. I'm sorry. That ain't no family that put me in jail. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You took one for the homies. Right. You a fool. Right. 100%. Hello, up in the house. Something wrong in your head. Yes, sir. And you go back to the same crowd, hang out with the same folks that allowed you to go to jail by yourself. Yeah. Matter of fact, watch this, y'all. Went to the courthouse. The one that committed the crime, watching them penalize you and send you to jail. All right, Mr. Collins, uh, for the crime of the drive-by, we're giving you 15 years. And the one that's guilty, sitting right there. Stay strong, homie. <laughs> Take one for the game. How come, watch this, how come the game can't go to jail? I'm saying something tonight. When it comes to being, being, being penalized for your own crime and for your own penalty, we got to understand these boys tonight begin to realize that I wronged Joseph. I did him wrong. And he said, now what we're going through. See, yo, the Bible said, beware, your sins will find you out. I don't care how long it may take. You may be an old man, but you're going to jail when they catch up with you. If you don't get forgiveness, you're going to hell. The brothers begin to realize that we're very, we are guilty concerning our brother. And then Reuben said, when he was, they was, he was begging, Reuben said, we answered them saying, speak not nothing you saying, do not sin against the child, and you would not hear, therefore behold, also his blood is required. Right. But we're going to get into some good stuff tonight because there's a, there's a message that God has with and through our lives. Joseph's brothers did not realize that they was part of the plan of God. Mm -hmm. Now, this does not make me feel better That God helped you through you, send me to jail. And God had a plan. That don't make me feel no better. That God knew about it and that was the plan of God. But here was the plan of God in Joseph's life and in these boys' life. And we, we talk about repentance and sometimes they said in the Old Testament, God didn't require repentance. That's a lie. God has required repentance from the very beginning. Huh? He required repentance. They may not have done it, but he required repentance. All right, now let's go to Genesis, the 45th chapter. As we go, jump to Genesis 45 from 42. All through that is going to be the game that Joseph played with his brethren as we get to 45 and, and how he would, he sent them away with the meal. And then the first time they put some money, he put his, he put the money back in their bag. They went, got back home and seen the money in their bag. But then the meal ran out. And then when they meal ran out, they came back again. And, 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 and so, so they dad said, well, put, put, bring, take back double money. Give them double this time. And y'all know that if you read in between 42 and 45, Joseph played another trick. He put his, his, his cup, his cup bearer, cup inside of one of those bags in the, I believe in Benjamin's bag, and, 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 uh, and end up having to bring them back again. He was playing games with them. But we want to get to the crux of the matter when it comes to God hid my future in my struggle. How much God is a very vital part of our lives, even when it looks bad. Even when it appears the worst, God is a part of our lives. All right, we skip to Genesis, the 45th chapter, and we're going to begin at the first verse. Genesis 45 and verse 1. Y'all read that in between there. It's just talking about the game that Joseph played with his brethren. This is where we're going to end up now. We're getting ready to get to the point where God's going to really make it stick out and make it count. 45 and 1. Joseph reveals his identity. 
First verse. It said, Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all of them that stood by him, and he cried. He caused every man to go out for me. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. While Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said to his brethren, I am Joseph. Do it my father yet live. And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. Remember, they thought that he were dead. Joseph said unto his brethren, come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brethren, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. Seventh verse. For these, two, six, for these two years have the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years left in the which there shall neither be eating nor harvest, earing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Now, so now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. Look at someone said, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh, Lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. What a powerful word here in the fifth verse. Look at that fifth verse again. He said, now therefore be not what? Well, no what? Amen. That you did what? For what? For God sent me before you to do what? Now, it took Joseph 20 some years to find that out. Look at somebody and say, Why are you doing that to me? <sighs> Joseph didn't know either. But I told you that whenever God wants to do something to you, He has to find somebody that does not like you. God uses folk that don't like you so that you can turn to him. Now, the Bible said Judas was chosen. Judas was chosen from birth to be the one to betray Christ. God has and finds those who would do the work because if he didn't betray him, Christ would not have died. Sometimes God will turn your friend on you. And somebody said, well, if you was my friend, you wouldn't do that. But y'all just don't know who friends they really with. They don't really realize they're, they're, they're friends with God, but don't even know it. God will cause people to attach to you, to appear, to look like, to feel like, to be your friend, but they're really not. And then these same people will turn around and do you in. And then you ask the question, if you was my friend, how could you do that? Somebody said friends don't do that. Well, who really said they was a friend? And then in order for somebody to really do you in, you have to like them. Somebody said you keep your who close and your somebody else closer? Keep your friends close and your what? And your enemies closer. Why you want to keep your enemy closer? So you can know what they're doing, right? But guess what? God used his brethren to do what they did. And Joseph said, Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves. Now years before now, Joseph would have killed his brother. If Joseph could have got out that pit, could have got out of prison with all that he was going through, he most likely would have killed or hurt his brethren, if not killed them, hurt them for what they need. I'm going to show y'all something about forgiveness. Watch this. Here lies true forgiveness. He said, don't be grieved nor angry with yourself. This, he said, in a way 
that he not only forgives and forget. But Joseph wanted them who had wronged him to forget what they had done. How many of you all want somebody to forget what they've done to you? Some of y'all still got a scam. Amen. And it's got blood on it. Mm. And you're not about to do what Joseph said. Joseph said, don't grieve yourself. Don't be angry with yourself. As a matter of fact, Joseph said, I want you to forget what you just did to me. What you did to me 20 some years ago. Brother Dylan, I want you to forget what you did for me. Who does that? I can look at some of y'all in here, some of y'all are saying, hey, it's not me. <laughs> well, you know what? If you want to go to the lake of fire yeah. with that unforgiveness, you can. But he said, listen, he didn't want them to suffer no more. Joseph saw what he seen in his brethren, and so he come to a conclusion, Mr. Howe, that listen, I see now that they were really sorry for what they had done. The Bible said godly sorrow working repentance. Mm -hmm. Godly sorrow working repentance. Meaning that you ask for forgiveness of that and you don't do that no more and you're sorry. Godly sorrow. See, people can't really forgive unless they godly sorrow. But how do you do that when someone has really wrong you. If we have to be honest on tonight, is it anybody here tonight is yet holding on to a grudge? You yet holding a grudge. Thank you for being honest. You yet holding a grudge. Listen, y'all can, can be honest about your grudge tonight. It's okay. As uh, long as you get rid of it before you die, it's okay. How many really, you're holding a grudge? you got a grudge against somebody right now. you got a grudge. It's a problem. You can't stand that person. You have a problem being around them. All I can tell you is that you can't die that way. God will give you an opportunity to forgive, but it's not going to be all your life. God will allow you the opportunity to forgive and save yourself if you want to. And I love, I love it when we just act so holy when it comes to things like this. You know, if you're talking about getting money and the Lord blessing us and all this kind of stuff, everybody just happy and hands go up, praise God. I love the Lord. But when you're talking about forgiveness, you're talking about scars, you're talking about someone has hurt you and someone has wounded you and someone has done something detrimental to you or your family members, that's why you can't tell other family members all the time what someone has done to you. Because some of your family members going to go to hell and you're going to go to heaven because they can't forgive and you can. It is not fair. Let me say this. It's not fair to keep your family in your business. Amen. I need to tell somebody. Family don't forgive very easy. And then sometimes family will forgive and you get home the grudge and you wonder how they how I don't like them and they like them. Y'all know the family members of y'all that, that, that y'all had some issues with folk and you can't stand them and can't get along with them and your family is ace bone cool with them, baby. <laughs> how can my sister, how can my brother run around with that individual that I can't stand? Right. There are some things that we should keep that happen to us in a family that you really can't share with other family members because everybody don't forgive. Some of y'all are going to be are the reasons that some of your family members going to go to hell. Pastor, you going to put that on? Yeah, I'm going to put that on you. You know why? Because you shared something with them you should not have shared. And they cannot get past it. They cannot get over it. They're yet holding the grudge. Here you are. You forgiven. You go on with your life. But that family member is yet holding the grudge. As a matter of fact, they can yet stomp them in the ground today if they see them. There are some things that you can't even tell your children. 
There are some things mama shouldn't tell their children about their daddy. And there are some things daddy shouldn't tell their children about their mama. They should just let them find it out on their own if they really have to. Because there are some things folk just cannot forgive very well. Forgiveness is a tough if you don't have God. Even with God, forgiveness is a tough pill to swallow with God. Can you imagine without God? So when you include people with things that they should not be included in, that's why people walk around with their nose stuck up at people and you don't even know why folk mad at you because they don't like you, I don't like you. Well, I can tell the truth, I never was that kind of person. I never let people become somebody that like somebody that make me not like them. I've always been that kind of person that I dealt with people individually on my own. That's why when I first came to glory about it, y'all heard the story, I've said it before. When I came to glory about it, I said, don't know, I don't need nobody to tell me nothing about nobody. Let me find out everybody on my own because watch this, time will bring everybody out. You can hide in a corner all you want. Time will bring you out. You can walk up and be sweet and cute and all this kind of stuff and all easy, show you easy to get along. That's all right. Time will bring you out. And guess what? The one that they was trying to tell me about, you all not this, and, and, and some was telling me, telling me from a distance, they, they know what they want to, well, you need to watch so-and-so, and so-and-so -and -so is this, and so-and-so -and -so is that, and, and the devil that's on the side of you, it's just like a snake in the grass, and you walk around with snakes in the grass. Listen, God lets me walk around with snakes in the grass. As a matter of fact, God let me sit with snakes. You need to watch your back. I don't have to. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord is in every place, beholding the evil and the good. I ain't got to walk around here trying to see what everybody's trying to do to me. I already know everybody don't like me to smile in my face. I don't care. I invite you to the house. You can spend over. We got an extra bed. I'll feed you. Make you some barbecue and I'll send you home. I'll feed the snake. Snake can't do no more to me than what God let me. He said, I give you power to trade upon scorpions and serpents. If you drink it and that thing, they won't hurt you. I don't have to worry about what folk trying to do to me. I am not my protector. God is. I don't have time to be walking around here trying to see who got a knife and who got a gun and who done dug a hole and who I can't be with and who I cannot be with. I'm with everybody. I don't thank you all of this. I don't thank you all of that. Listen, when we love God, that's why Jesus was able to go around his enemies. And they said, you eat, you eat with the devils and you with this, you with that. He said, listen, I came to save those who were lost. Those that are whole don't need a physician. I need to be around the sick folk. <laughs> so Joseph, in his telling his brethren, they felt the pain. The duty of self-forgiveness. Here's our other problem. Not only will we not forgive others, but we won't forgive ourselves. Do you not know that if you're not forgiven, if you can't forgive yourself, then how does God forgive you? Well, God can forgive me, but I don't forgive myself. Have any of y'all done something that you can't forgive yourself for? If you are, you're living in hell. You're living in pain. You're living in pain if you can't forgive yourself. This is what's going to happen when the folk go to the lake of fire. They're going to remember that they had a chance to be saved and they didn't. They're going to be in the lake of fire, Mr. Howell. And guess what? It ain't going to be so much as the fire is the, the fact I had an opportunity to miss hell. Can y'all imagine I had an opportunity to not be here? How many of y'all gone to the wrong party? <laughs> Any of y'all ever went to a wrong, the, the wrong party? Y'all took the wrong party? Y'all accepted the wrong invite? And when you got there, hello somebody. Self-forgiveness. Self-forgiveness. Do you not know self-forgiveness will run you crazy? 
if you don't forgive yourself, if you can't come to an end to say, Lord, I forgive them, but I can't forgive me. How do you not forgive you? How can you not let God say, Lord, I got a pain here. I need forgiveness. I need to forgive me. You can live your whole life in bondage and in prison, walking around here like you're free, and you're not. Walking around here like you're happy, and you're not happy. Well, guess what? Joseph's brothering, he was letting them know it was not you, but God. In the sixth verse, in the seventh verse, he said, God sent me before you to preserve you a prosperity in the earth and to save your life by a great deliverance. So uh, God, uh, he saved their life, but he had to go through the hell. Well, did Jesus save our life and he went through the hell? <laughs> but we don't want to go through no hell for nobody to save nobody. How many of y'all want to go through hell in the safe, just to save somebody? So y'all don't want to help nobody, right? Y'all don't want to help anybody. Huh? You willing? Well, guess what? Joseph didn't realize that he was going through what he was going through to save someone else's life. And I think many times we don't realize that what we're going through is to save someone else's life. How many of y'all going through stuff that said you had nothing to do with? You're going through some stuff that you had nothing to do with, but you're going through some stuff you had nothing to do with. And, and, and who are y'all blaming? Y'all blaming whoever y'all think it is, right? <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all right now. You got that. You got to ask God to forgive you for blaming me for what you're going through, <laughs> huh? So that you got to ask God to forgive you for blaming me for what you're going through because God is using me for what you're going through to bring you somewhere else. So you say, Lord, how could that person do that to me? Because the Lord trying to take you somewhere where you're not. For Joseph to get to where he had to go through, he had to go through the hell while everybody else looked like they were going through the flower bed of ease. But guess what? Believe it or not, his brother suffered these 20 some years believing that they had killed their brother that they didn't know was alive. So they lived in hell day and night believing that Joseph was dead. But Joseph was not dead. But they thought he were. And after it was over, they felt guilty for what they had done. But they didn't know what Joseph was. Guess what? They didn't go looking for Joseph. And neither did Joseph go back home. Why? God had a plan. God didn't want them to meet before now. So the life that Joseph was going through, and now that he's where he's at, that's why many people, when you get through going through the task and all of a sudden you, 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 you sit, you get, you get where you are and folks begin to grudge you for where you are and people get jealous of you for what you have accomplished and what you got, but they don't know what you've been through. Huh? They don't know what you've been through. You think you're something. I don't think I'm something. Because if, if I had a choice, I would not have gone through what I went through. I wouldn't be going through what I'm going through now if I had a choice. But guess what? In order for me to get where I'm going to, I must go through something. Look at somebody said through it. Some of us are complaining about where we are and not knowing that your future is in your struggle. Am I going to get a blessing out of this or what? Have y'all asked that question? Am I going to get a blessing? I'm going through all this trouble. Am I going to get a blessing out of this or what? Is there something in it for me? I mean, asked that question. I have. Is there something in it for me? Am I going to get something? You know how you, you follow a person around for so long and, and then they get a blessing and then you turn around and look like, you know, you're going to you know, you break me off some? Y'all said break me off a piece? 
And they act just like y'all ain't existing. God has a way of taking us through the trials that we're in. And he said, for God have sent me before you. I didn't know. I'm going to tell the truth. I didn't know it. I really didn't know that really God let bad things happen to good people. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that? I mean, did y'all really know? I, I ain't talking about what, what, because everything negative happened to you, you say it's the devil. Everything bad that has happened in your life, that devil, that Diablo, that no good so-and-so, that, 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 that devil, and, and really, God used the devil. <laughs> oh, my. We are blaming the devil where God is at fault. If you want to say at fault. You mean the stuff that's happened to me is all God? It's all God. You mean God let me get a divorce? Yep, yeah, God let me lose sugar. Yeah, God let me lose a job. God let me lose a home. God let me lose a car. God let me lose money. God let me go into debt. God let me. God, look at somebody say, God let me. God. He watched you. <laughs> Through all of that to bring you out, to put you somewhere else. But he could not bring you out if you didn't go through. So he said, well, well, I didn't have a choice on what I went through. Anybody had a choice? Did God, did God, how many God detailed your life out? He said, now, this is what's going to happen to you. You say you love Jesus, but the things that happen to you is not going to look like you say and you love Jesus. How many of y'all been disappointed since y'all been saved? <laughs> and, and how many of y'all ask that, that, that crazy question? Why am I saved? <sighs> well, well, listen. <sighs> I'm going to tell you the truth. The, the church made it seem like that when you got saved, you were going to never have a problem. Mm -hmm. They made it seem like that when you got saved, everything was going to be all right. And look like, how many of y'all can tell the truth? Look like you didn't really have real problems until you got saved. Amen. It's like, when I got saved, it's like, wait a minute. I, listen, let me see. And you know, I'm just going to divert here for a minute. It's like, I didn't have no woman problem when I wasn't saved. Now I'm saved, I got a problem. Me and it bothered me. I could walk right by me. I ain't had no problem. Now I got saved. It's like, ooh, we. It's like, look like my eyes catch everything. Huh? It looked like when I got saved, stuff bothered me more. And it looked like I was tempted more when I got saved. How I many really felt like they were tempted more when they got saved? It's like, why is that bothering me? I ain't never had that kind of problem. <laughs> we got saved not just to miss hell or to go to heaven but we got saved to be a blessing to someone else they didn't tell us that being saved entailed going through trials to help others come to Christ and sometimes God uses your life to bring others to Christ uh, as I'm Fortunate as it may sound, God allows tragedy to come our way to save somebody else. And then we ask the question, how could a loving God do that? Well, we see Joseph right here. Here's a prime, here's a prime story right here. Joseph had seen huh? He went from the pit to the palace, right? But when Joseph saw the palace, he didn't see the pit. And some of us, because of the pit, we can't see the palace. Look at somebody say, see your way out. You better see some good where you are if you're going to overcome from where you are. Because if you keep downing where you are, it's not going to ever get better. 
it looks like things keep happening, keep culminating, it's because we are right where God wants us to be. Somebody said, really? You mean negatively? We forgot God works in the negative. We didn't believe that God would allow those things to happen. I know God wouldn't do that to me. I know God wouldn't allow it to happen. I know God wouldn't let me go through that. God let me go through all that and some more. And guess what? But I'm still saved. Sister Lawrence, I didn't leave God. I started to. I said, shoot, Lord, I've been saved all my life. I've been saved since I was 14 years old. I haven't even experienced life. I said, Lord, this is a good time for me to get out. And all this stuff happened to me. I might was to get out in the world and see what the world was like. I got saved at 14. Y'all know been saved at 14. You know, I, ain't, I don't know nothing. Greenhorn as a greenhorn can be. Never been to a party. Never had no drink. Smoked one time and tried to choke me. Amen. Had a little strawberry hill. Amen. That wasn't nothing but a little sugar with a Kool-Aid with a little alcohol in it. Amen. Friends smoked a little weed off of my stomach. I said, man, anything smell like that? I won't smoke it. They offered me some beer. I said, man, anything smell like somebody threw up in a can and put a top on and opened and asked me to drink it? I said, I couldn't drink it. Save the 14. Ain't spent no kind of life. Never been to a party. Never been to a club. Never been nowhere. Never done nothing. Folks asked me about sex. I would lie about it. I was having sex. No, I wasn't having no sex. Didn't even know what sex was. Didn't even know how to have sex. Didn't, didn't, didn't know nothing. Help somebody. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all know the personal thing that you use. I told them, I said, how do you use it? You blow it up or what? I said, do you blow it up? I said, I, I didn't even know how to use it. I, I seen one and I told him, he said, man, how you having sex? You don't even know how to. I said, what do you blow it up or what? <laughs> That's how dumb I was. I'm just as green as a horn can be. <laughs> I said, well, you're like a balloon. I told you I had to blow it up. They said, no, you ain't, having, you ain't having no sex. You don't know what sex is. <laughs> you don't even know what a condom is. I didn't even know what a condom is. I said, what's that? <laughs> I told you, I've been saved all my life. Wow. And so when I had a chance to get out, I was going to get out saved. I said, Lord, you know what? I ain't never experienced nothing, never been no party. I ain't never enjoyed nothing. Everybody around, you know, having parties, drinking, clubbing, having sex, having fun, telling me how good it is. Now, here I am going to church every Friday night, saying, telling me I love the Lord and all that kind of stuff. I don't know what that is. I said, it's time, Sister Bell. But the Lord wouldn't let me do it. The Lord wouldn't let me do it. And I said, I told, I told someone, I'm just going to show you how, how God watches over your life. I said, in all of my life, let's say in all of my life, in all of my life, I, I mean, one time i God keeping us, I, I mean, I know this may sound strange, but in all of my life, I've only been with four women in all of my life. I'm 62 years old and only known four women in all of my life. And I, I used to say, God, I ain't experienced life. I don't know nothing. And uh, I began to hear the stories about the folks that was experiencing life. And I said, oh, thank you for letting me only experience four women in my life. I, 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 ain't, I ain't, got, ain't got no problem. I ain't, I ain't got no sexual problem. I, I, I ain't, ain't no perfect. I ain't, I ain't got no issues. I ain't got no wine problem. I ain't got no drinking problem. I ain't got no snorting problem. I ain't got no snow, smoking problem. I said, Lord, I said, I ain't experienced life. And I said, but you know what? All what I see that my friends went through. I said, thank you. Then I walk by all that stuff and it don't bother me because guess what? I never got entangled in it. So I can go to parties and see folks doing stuff that don't bother me. I ain't never had it, never did it. So I said, Lord, thank you for me not getting introduced to stuff that I don't have to ask for forgiveness for or I don't have to fight through it now that I'm saved. I had friends that after they got saved because they indulge in life. They had a hard time staying saved. You, and that's why you find some folks, they have to stay in church. I mean, every time the doors is open, they want to be inside the church because they lifestyle that they had before church. So it's like, oh, no, I got to go to God. So when we look at the life of Joseph, he had to go through something for God to put him where he was supposed to be. What we want, we want to obtain the palace, but we don't want to go through the pitch. But God is taking us through some stuff it's going to get better after a while. It's going to change for us. It really is. But we 
can't see it right now because it's painful. Anytime it's painful where you are, you can't see your way out. And it's hard to look up when everything you see is down. When everything you have is broken, when something is being taken, when something is being destroyed, it would look like every time you try to get up, you fall back down again. And you ask the question, is God a part of my life? He is. And I don't know about y'all, I ask God, God, do you really care? You know, when you go through things in life and stuff keep happening, you ask God, do you really care? Is it worthwhile being saved? Look like you just need to be unsaved. It don't look like everybody's unsaved. Everything come easy. You know, they crook and they rob, and guess what? They get money, they don't go to jail. They do all that stuff, and they get away with it. I mean, they defraud Social Security, they defraud unemployment, they defraud everything, and they get away with it. They go and fall in the store and say they got hurt, they already had an injury, go get a lawyer and get that claim. Right. Right. <laughs> and here I am, fall for real and get hurt and can't get nothing. Right. Right. You, you, you fall and you get hurt in an accident, you get in an accident, are you hurt? You know you're not hurt. I ain't gonna ask how many that lying. How many times y'all lied in an accident that you done got money for an injury that you never had? Wearing a neck brace and you could turn it every which way but loose. <laughs> when God is in charge of your life, we go through hell. But Jesus showed us how to do it. We look to the hills from which cometh our help. All of our help come from the Lord. In my closing on tonight, it's hard to believe. It's that Joseph's recognition of God's hand in his life. Look how long it took Joseph to recognize it was God and not his brothers. That was a long time ago. But guess what God did? God had a purpose for Joseph's life so Joseph couldn't die. God had a purpose for Joseph's brothers' lives. They couldn't die. When God has a purpose of your life, whatever's happening to you cannot kill you. Thank you, Lord. I don't care how bad it may seem. Whatever's happening in your life when God has a purpose, you can't die. It's much like when he told Satan about Job. You can do everything to him. You can touch him, but don't take his life. Sometimes as we're going through in this life, everything that we have is being touched. But God got away. He's going to bring you out the way he brought Joseph out. The story ends where his father eventually came. And they came to Egypt. And they all was joined again. And they reverenced Joseph. They bowed to him because of his place and position. And little did he know that he had to pay for that. His brother was mad, but he had to pay for them bowing. And guess what? If you want to go up, you have to pay if you want to go up. There's a cost and there's a price. And I don't care how much you may dislike it. Watch what it says. It says, it's equally true that so strangely that we know that it has been in times that God cares not, God sees not, that it looked like God don't even care. But it's during those times that it looked like God doesn't care that he does. And so on tonight as we conclude, God hit my struggle, hit my future and my struggle. That in order to go up, you got to go down. God's going to bring you out. But you got to humble yourself too. Joseph and his brethren both had to be humble in order to get the prize. I don't like how God humbles me. 
I don't like that I have to go through. It doesn't feel good. It hurts. It's painful. And sometimes it's difficult even to do what God asks, knowing that it's right to do. But knowing that God says, I'm taking you through it. And if you know God is going to take you through it, you have to bear the pain that you have to bear in order to come out all right. Look at someone and say, you are coming out all right. It just don't feel like it right now. But you're coming out all right. And it's not going to come from who you think. In the midst of your trials, God will give you new friends. God will give you new acquaintances. And God will set you up. And God will let other people set you up that you think is a bad setup, but it's really a good setup. Because you don't like it in the beginning don't mean that it's not God. Everything God brings to us don't start out pleasant. <laughs> Sometimes it starts out bitter so it can get better. But in the end, we win. God bless you. God keep you on tonight. Any prayer requests? Any praise report on tonight? Prayer requests or praise report on tonight? Amen. Prayer requests? Pray oh, everybody's fine. Huh? Everybody is good. Amen. No sicknesses? Amen. We thank God for